Uh, we've got some call-ins, and uh, it's very important. The uh, the oh oh oh, thank you. My uh, executive producer is reminding me of something very important. Sponsors are trying to get to. I guess Attorney Steve Seidman, Seidman, Margulis, and Fairman, LLP, 20 South Clark Street, 2 First National Plaza, Suite 700, Chicago, Illinois, 60603. Our toll-free number is 888-837-3275. The office there is 312-781-1977. America's Heroes Group is also proudly sponsored by Pearls, place down home Southern Cooking and Buffet at 3901 South Michigan Avenue, uh, Chicago, Illinois. The phone number there is 877-275-5852. Just a great, great place, uh, the buffet. Now, of course, you can pick up or delivery only. Pick up or delivery only because of, you know, the situation. Also, America's Heroes Group, she serves, she matters partner and sponsor with the National Women's Veterans United, NWVU, uh, the 8620 South Pulaski, their office on the lower level, here in Chicago, Illinois, 60652. The office is 872-731-2150. Website, www.nwvu.org. So we're happy about that. All right, uh, we have on our guest, guest lines, uh, Dr. Uh, Ellen Cokie, who is a military sexual trauma coordinator at uh, Jesse Brown, and uh, we are so pleased to have her with us. Doctor, how are you? Doctor, can you hear me? Yes, she's there. Doctor, all right, well, well uh, we see Chandra Johnson also is, is with us, a U.S. Army veteran and Jesse Brown public affairs officer with over 18 years of combined VA experience. Uh, are you there, Chandra? Hi, Cliff. Yes, uh, I'm here. Good, good. Hi. How are you? I am just fine. How are you doing today? Good, good, good. Thank you. There's so many things going on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Is that? Uh, this is Dr. Koski. Yes. Oh yeah, Dr. Koski. Thank you for being back with us. We appreciate it. Of course. It. Thank you. Thank you. So many things going on now. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Chandra, you were going to tell us something. Uh, t- tell us what's going on. Well, sure, we're yeah. here today. Um, Dr. Korski is actually our military sexual trauma coordinator at Jesse mm-hmm. Brown. So she's going to talk a little bit about her role. And also she's going to talk about STEM month. Um, this month, of course, April is Sexual Thought Awareness Month. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to her so she can um, talk about her program. Okay. All right. Doc? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I am the uh, Military Sexual Trauma Coordinator at Jesse Brown, as was mentioned, and each VA has a Military Sexual Trauma Coordinator um, that's located there, and is uh, the role is designed to be just a really a primary point of contact to any veteran or any uh, clinician or provider uh, that might have questions related to military sexual trauma. And part of the goal is really to reduce any barriers that veterans might have Um, in terms of uh, reaching staff to address issues related to military sexual trauma since it's such an important and key issue. So um, one good thing that's important to mention is that I have a direct phone number that any veteran can can give a call to at the Mm -hmm. VA, Mm -hmm. Um, and that number I can just provide it to folks um, is 312-569-MSTI. And so really I have the opportunity to just... Mm-hmm. MSTI, yes. Yeah, that, that fits um, in well. <laughs> and and so I just serve as a as a point of contact for any veteran that has questions or concerns related to MST. Um, and I also just am a community partner um, to agencies in the community that offer services. Um, and I I try to get veterans connected with care or address any issues or concerns they might have. 
Um, and so this month is, um, as was mentioned, is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And it is it happens every April, and it's throughout the community and, and throughout the country. And it's a month that's designed to just really uh, increase awareness related to sexual assault and, and try to um, cultivate prevention of these issues in our community. And um, we have a lot of great programming that goes on within the VA in particular um, related to Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And, and this year's theme is You Are Not Alone. And mm-hmm. I just think that that's such an important message to mm-hmm. convey to mm-hmm. veterans mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to MST. Um, and we usually have a lot of really great public-facing events that go on at the VA for SAM Month, um, but obviously some of the programming has had to change a little bit this year. Um, so Ms. Johnson, um, our public affairs officer, has been fantastic in uh, partnering with me to really think through ways uh, to get the word out to veterans. So we've been having some Facebook Live events to generate awareness. That's great. Ms. Johnson, give us some examples. So um, Facebook Live, that event happens every Wednesday for Sam Month. So the the subjects change. So the first week we had an introduction introduction with Dr. Um, Dr. Ellen, and they pretty much went over what she just did, um, what Sam Month is for, and what the MST program can do for you. And the second week we did the closed line project, and I'll let Dr. Ellen talk about that closed line project really great. Okay. Doc? Yes. Um, we have an art therapist at Jesse Brown named Patrick Morrissey, who is just an extraordinary individual. And uh, the Clothesline Project is something that's really an area of expertise for him. Um, and it is a art installation where veterans have um, designed pieces. Uh, they have um, used a t-shirt and, and expressed um about their experience of military sexual trauma on uh, a T-shirt. And these T-shirts then have been um, displayed in the uh, public area of the hospital um, on a clothesline. And it really just creates a powerful representation um, for veterans to really express themselves and speak their mind about what their experience of MSC has been. And it's, it's really a great way to generate awareness and generate attention to this issue during Sam Month in particular. And Patrick let me know that um, the art installation is growing. And so at this point, um, we have 75 independent T-shirts that are part of the collection. Um, so it's quite large, and, and it's really something to, uh, to take stock of visually uh, when it is uh, presented in the hospital. Give us an example about the, the T-shirt, Doc. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, there are all kinds of, of different colors, and, you know... They're the, actually the T-shirts. Artwork, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. and, and the artwork is just really individualized, so none of the T-shirts is the same. Um, some of them have silk screening on them, some of them have other kinds of uh, pieces or materials that are added to the T-shirts, um, but each one is a distinct expression and story of a veteran who has experienced MST. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, and the gallery is yeah. also available on our Facebook page. So if they go to VA Chicago on Facebook, they can see that clothesline gallery. So since we, we weren't able to display it, because usually we display the T-shirt, um, we display them at the facility. But since we couldn't do that, we did a virtual gallery. And that's something you can see online at VA hmm. Chicago so on Facebook. Interesting, interesting. WVON call-in number is 312 312- Three seven four eight one three zero. If you have a question or a comment, very interesting. These mm-hmm. people can certainly give you an answer for sure. Do you think, to either of you, that uh, there is more of this than people really realize? The, the problems uh, with uh, with yes, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I could speak to that. Um, Please, I think that this is an issue um, that's very hard to get. Um, accurate estimates on, sure. um, but, but we know that, for instance, uh, one in four female veterans have reported a history of military sexual trauma, and one in 100 male veterans. Mm. And we also know that at the Jesse Brown VA itself, we have over 1,700 veterans who have reported a history of MST. How, how many male veterans did you say? 
it's um, generally the prevalence of it is uh, one in 100 male veterans mm-hmm. have reported a history of it. Mm-hmm. And there's mm-hmm. probably uh, uh, a lot more male veterans, but they don't report it. Would that, would that be fair to state? I think it can be a very difficult issue for male veterans to report. Um, so I think that it's very possible that there's more who have not felt comfortable sharing and, and haven't disclosed. We also. So what? Uh, yeah, I'm Ellen, sorry. What would some of the symptoms be? Mm-hmm. Would it be similar to PTSD? Like, say, I experienced this. How would I? How would I know that I needed to reach out for help? What are some of the things well, I would go through? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. And I think that um, MST is definitely an experience rather than a, a particular diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Um, but we know that it can be associated with a wide range of, of difficulties, including mental health symptoms of depression, anxiety. For some, it is post-traumatic stress disorder, um, but it can be eating disorders. It can be substance use. Um, it can be insomnia. It can be um, difficulties in relationships with others. Uh, so it can be a wide range of things, of uh, mental health conditions, but there can also be physical health conditions that we know are tied to MST, like chronic migraine headaches, gastrointestinal problems, sexual dysfunctioning, um, or even pelvic floor disorder issues. So um, it, can, it can be a lot of issues, and it's just a good conversation to start with uh, your providers, your mental health providers and your uh, primary care physician. We are pleased to have back with us Terry Odom, U.S. Army and Navy veteran for 16 years and an MST survivor. And uh, welcome. Well, Terry, are you there? I hope we didn't lose Terry. Terry, welcome back. If you're there, you, we're sure you're on our line. Uh, he was with us some some time ago, and uh, we certainly wanted to to get him back. Oh, okay, I understand. He is with us. Terry, are you there? I'm here. I'm sorry, I got disconnected. That's so good. We are so pleased to have you. Uh, hey, welcome back. All right. Thank you. Right. Give give us some some background here, some some information about. Uh, well, uh, I'm, you know, I'm mm-hmm. I'm involved in the St. Louis VA locally, but also nationwide. Of course, I uh, do. Um, I am a board director of um, a nonprofit called Protect Our Defenders, which we uh, launched in 2011, and um, like. The doctor said MST is is actually it's a Department of Veterans um, ab- abbreviation for military sexual uh, trauma, and w- what I uh, am able to do in my volunteer role at the St. Louis VA um, currently not so much because of what's going on, of course. So we've had to do a lot of different um, things. Um, my role is to um, advise. And, and work with our exec, our executive team and all of our clinicians and providers and, of course, the most important people are veterans. And um, so uh, just through trial and error, uh, I've been able to um, extend my, my, my ears to their voice uh, to uh, approximately about 10,000 veterans now because when I originally Mm -hmm. um, was called to volunteer in that role, it was supposed to be a six-week program, and in June coming up will be my ninth year. So (laughs) the the pilot program, the six-week pilot program is going into its ninth year. Um, (laughs) And, um, you know, obviously it's working. Well, you know, I wish it didn't work. I wish there was not one need, veteran. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wish there was not one veteran that ever walked through the doors of any VA or any any private sector facility that needed the services that that we do. Mm-hmm. And like the doctor said, you know, all, all kinds of uh, uh, after after effects from from the a sexual assault uh, or harassment, and uh, it can be lots of mental health issues. Uh, but also a, a tremendous amount of physical health issues. And uh, so it, it takes an entire team of providers, mental health, uh, GI, um, 
you name it. Uh, we have a obviously our suicide prevention team is is wonderful uh, to work with because there is a higher percentage of military sexual trauma veterans in that population that um, either attempt suicide or sadly complete suicide. So we're constantly having to, you know, work work on those issues. And my my thing with veterans that test positive for MST is, you know, I want them to be able to share with me, since I'm a volunteer, it's a lot easier. I'm not their provider. I'm, I don't get paid by the Department of Veterans Affairs, and I'm one of them. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in their shoes, been in their shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, not that each person in each situation isn't different, but um, fortunately, um, you know, I, I have a really good rapport. Um, I think I do, seem to, and, um, you know, veterans that I work with know that they can call me 24-7, 365, I'll be there. Um, and my, you know, when when they're comfortable and ready, that's when I in my office, with their permission, will pick up the phone to get a hold of our military sexual trauma uh, coordinator first. And then we right now it's a she. Um, and at that point, like the doctor said, we send the veteran to um, all the services that best fits their needs currently. And one of the things about a military sexual trauma veteran, uh, you do not need to be service-connected to receive services for MST. Um, So you could walk into the VA, Mm -hmm. go to enrollment. You don't have to have any kind of service connection whatsoever, and we will treat you to include pharmaceuticals if needed. Is that correct, doctor? Is that still the policy? Yes, um, treatment can include mental health, um, physical health care, and um, can include um, prescriptions as well. Yes, that's correct. So, um, you know, that's 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 a huge benefit, and it started about six years ago where we could do that because before, generally, um, our veterans needed to have um, a service connection, um, our pension already before we. Mm-hmm did any type of treatment or anything like that. So that in this particular situation, you no longer need to be service connected or even have a claim in or anything like that. Benefits can come second. We have to, we have to fix your health first or, or at least start the journey because it's not, not anything that can be fixed. But, you know, with a large amount of support and team effort, um, we have it, it's it's a journey, and it like I said, it just takes a mountain of people because it's um, military sexual trauma is definitely underreported, um, and it it just takes a, a an enormous large professional team to work with each veteran, and um, myself, um, uh, the the VA was the best thing that that front door was the best door I ever walked in. Wow. But without walking in that front door 15 years ago, I definitely would not be on this phone right now. That is so interesting. And uh, it, is it getting better relative to uh, veterans that are having the problem? It's not getting better, sir. It's the, the numbers are still increasing sadly um and that includes from our academies and everything else i will say what's getting better is some of the stigma is is starting to drop so we are actually having more men finally coming out and women it's not it's not any you know they're finally it may be 30 years after separation from military it may be six months after separation from military um but a lot of the stigma is is um, ending, especially at the Department of Veterans Affairs. We have many resources now, and uh, like the doctor said, you could start with your primary if that's where you want to start. You know, you you may have already been enrolled in the VA for something else, and all of a Mm, sudden, mm -hmm. you know, you think, okay, it's time now. Um, I there's something that's really heavy on me. That's really, really, really my number one problem, and this is where it is because not every sexual assault was reported during military service. So we had to look for sure. um, magnets and things, marker, I'm sorry, markers within their service records and their service jackets. And when you start looking at someone's service records and, mil- and medical records, 
you'll definitely see markers um, that yeah, something exactly. serious yeah. uh, happened um, to their to them, right. and that's how a lot of the claims are put through and so forth. Um, because one of the saddest things about military sexual um, trauma survivors is the retaliation, the guilt, right. the lack of belief. Um, you know, you folks are just and, doing a fantastic job. So it just uh, takes a yeah. takes a lot of takes a lot of people takes yeah. a long right. it's, a, it's a journey it's not right. it's a it's a marathon not a sprint mm -hmm. and there's going to be thank good you. days and thank, bad days right thank you so much thank to you. all of you and uh, this is America's Heroes Group and we will be back. <laughs>